Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas McGee and in this video we're gonna talk about how to create your own high quality screen capture videos absolutely free. Okay, so there's a lot of power in creating screen capture or screen cap videos. This is actually, this video that I'm recording right now is actually going to be a screen capture video. Uh, but there's a lot that you can do with them and they're becoming more and more popular. Uh, in the sense that you don't necessarily have to create you know, YouTube videos. You can be working with a client or a customer and you wanna show them something on your website or maybe you know a piece of software really well and you wanna be able to train people in that software. We've got people who are creating full on online courses that are demonstrating step-by-step -step how to create you know, platforms or how to use specific software. I know I've created a number of training series myself like this. But whatever it is that you do, there's more than likely gonna come a time when you wanna create some sort of screen capture video. Now, the problem is that there's a lot of solutions out there, a lot of software that enables you to create screen capture videos. The problem is that a lot of it can be fairly expensive. There's some really good ones out there. I like ScreenFlow, which is great, but it's gonna cost in excess of $100. It's got a lot of features built in. It's pretty easy to use and it's really powerful. However, recently I decided I wanted to start doing live broadcasting. So over at Notable Themes, I'm regularly doing live broadcasts over there, live workshops where I teach and I train on the topic of WordPress. And so I've never really been very happy with a lot of the webinar software that exists today. So that kind of sent me down the path of trying to find some software that was gonna work a little bit better. And that's where I found some software called OBS, which is called Open, or which stands for Open Broadcasting Software. And essentially what it does, is it's kind of a blank canvas. It's got a lot of features built into it, enables you to create your own live streaming or streaming uh, framework in essence, your own layout with scenes and everything else. So you might be wondering, okay, so what does live streaming have to do with doing screen capture? So what I discovered is that this OBS software built into it, while it does allow you to live stream, it also enables you to simultaneously video record, or rather than actually pushing your broadcast to a live stream service, you can just save to your computer an actual video file. So it works great as an actual screen recording uh, piece of software. Even better is that it's for both PC and Mac and it is absolutely free. So there is a little bit of legwork. You do have to do a little bit of setup. It's not quite as intuitive as some of the more expensive software out there that are geared towards screen recording. But I found that once I got it set up right, not only is does it become really efficient, uh, it actually has more power and more tools built into it simply because of how OBS is set up to handle video and screen recording. So let's go ahead and dive into setting up OBS to do your own screen capture videos. Okay, so here we are at the OBS website. Uh, as you can see, they've got three different formats. So really nice that this is totally free software to work with. Of course, it does take some extra steps to get set up as you'll be able to see here, but we're gonna walk you through the basics uh, just so you can get up and running. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download and install the particular version that uh, fits your operating system. And we're gonna go from there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up OBS. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And just a, a little note as well, I will mention uh, before I jump into anything here, it's gonna be really helpful if you're gonna be working with OBS to have two monitors. So if you're just working with a laptop, you can try it, but it might be a little bit challenging to get working. So just so you know, if you've got a laptop and a monitor and you can use that separate monitor for OBS, you're gonna be way better off. Otherwise you're gonna have to do some, what I like to call window juggling. So let's go ahead and jump in here and take a look how to get this set up. So this is OBS. Uh, this is a blank scene. So before I go any further, let me explain kind of some of the pieces that we've got here. So OBS has, as I mentioned, something called scenes and then they've got something called sources. You can think of these scenes as very much like a movie scene. It has its own background, its own characters, its own, you know, all of the elements of one scene go here and you can create as many of you as you want. In essence, they're a collection of sources. And this will make more sense as we go through this tutorial, but I just wanted to lay that groundwork first. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is open the preferences of OBS. Uh, in this video, remember, we're just gonna be covering the, the process 
of doing screen recording. Generally, uh, OBS is meant for uh, broadcasting live, and I will be teaching that in a future video. Uh, however, this is just gonna be uh, a lesson on how to use OBS for some really simple screen recording. Okay, so what I typically do is I go through and I like the, I like the dark mode, so if you wanna change the theme, you can do that here. But here are the things that are really relevant. You wanna make sure that you have all of these uh, set to these particular settings. I've noticed that uh, if you keep this uh, sample rate, it tends to down, uh, it tends to record better. Stereo, and you can just keep these all the same. Now video, I've already changed it, but you're gonna wanna make sure that this is set to 1920 by 1080, both the base and the output. This is gonna be 1080p resolution. So that's gonna be really important if you're gonna be uploading your videos to something like YouTube or Vimeo to make sure that it is the proper resolution. And then FPS, I typically keep it 30. You can up it to 60 or something higher if you want. Just know that the higher the frame rate, that means the more frames it's capturing per second, uh, the larger the file size and the more uh, it's going to demand on your computer. So those are things to keep in mind as you are recording. Okay, then we wanna jump over to uh, output and under output, we're gonna be able to pick where we want this to appear on our computer. I'm gonna go ahead, uh, jump through here. Let's see. I'm just gonna go ahead and do my desktop. But you can pick anywhere on your computer you want these recordings to appear after you're done with them. Recording quality, you can pick here how much you want the, uh, if you want to distinguish, you want really high quality files. Uh, you can go uh, this particular one down here. Just keep this in mind that uh, if your computer's processor isn't that powerful, it might have some trouble with this. I, I typically, typically just keep it as same as stream and it tends to work. But this is something to play with if you're not happy with the particular file quality that you're getting. Okay. Recording format, you need to kind of select based upon what type or what you're going to be doing with this particular file that you're recording. If you're just going to be doing a quick recording and then sending it to someone, I'd recommend doing MP4. Just know that if you do MP4 and something goes wrong, if there's a corruption during the recording process, MP4s typically are unrecoverable, whereas an MOV file tends to be somewhat more salvageable. MOV file is also gonna be a higher recording quality as well uh, over something like an MP4. So you just wanna keep those things in mind, but those are pretty much the only two formats you're probably going to want to select. Uh, okay, and that's pretty much it for the basic settings. Uh, then what we wanna do is wanna create now, we're gonna go through and we're gonna create two separate scenes. Okay, so for the, this first scene, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna call this our browser. Then we're gonna create a second scene, and this is gonna be called our desktop. All right, so now for our browser, you see here we've got the second section here, or we've got our selection of scenes, and now we've got sources. So now we need to add a source here. Now, typically what you would think you would do, what we're about to do is we're gonna create uh, something that's going to capture our browser window. And most people think that by default you would do window capture, which you could. The only problem with window capture, however, is that it doesn't show your cursor. So what we're gonna do instead is a display capture. Click okay. I'm gonna select my second monitor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and crop to window. Then we're gonna select the window. Click okay, so we'll go zero, one to window, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our browser and we just need to go ahead and crop that or resize that I should say to fit uh, within our frame here within the actual uh, video viewing size. Okay, so that's been set. Then what I like to do is actually just click this lock button that just ensures that I can't move around or do anything or mess up that particular uh, a view that I've got set up. And as you can see here, now I am, uh, you can see my cursor and you can actually view uh, this particular window. The nice thing is I've set up a scene now that I can just view, uh, if I'm demoing a website or something like that, I can just uh, view only the browser. So you don't have to worry about any other windows getting in the way, you just view that. Okay, so then let's say that, you know what, I wanted a view to be able to show my whole window, my whole uh, display. So now let's go ahead and do monitor two, select the second display, no crop and click okay. 
All right, then we need to go in here and resize it to make sure it fits. There we go. And I'm just doing some really basic stuff here. The neat thing is, is that you can create as many of these scenes. Let's go ahead and lock this real quick. You can create a ton of different scenes. So you've got a whole bunch of different applications you work with. You can click between these really easily and you do these on the fly. The nice thing about screen recording this way is that you have to do little or no editing afterwards, right? So if you can get really good at going over here and switching between your particular uh, scenes that you've created. You can do that really easy. You can also go into the preferences here. I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but you can create hotkeys that bind to different things that you created. You see here browser and desktop are the two scenes I created. I can bind hotkeys uh, to these particular um, scenes to switch without ever looking at OBS. So if you want to be a real whiz, or even if you're not working with a second monitor and you want to minimize uh, OBS and just use your keyboard hot, uh, you know, shortcuts in order to switch between scenes, you can do that. It's a really powerful tool. Okay, so now let's say what we want to do, uh, I want to add my webcam to this, right? And this is where OBS starts getting really powerful because you can do so much uh, with how you customize it. It's layers and, you know, the sky's the limit. So let's go ahead and add now an, uh, let's see here, a video capture device. And I know in a previous video, I did mention I like to record with an um, with a DSLR camera, but just for the sake of this example, I'm just gonna stick to a basic webcam. Okay, then I get to select a specific device. This is just my basic webcam. Perfect, there we go. We'll keep the preset as it is. And then we'll go ahead and make that smaller. So here's the cool thing. You can actually take this and you can put it wherever you want. So you can stick it here, you can move it around, you can uh, you know make it smaller, make it larger. Go ahead and do that. Perfect. Okay, and then what we can do is we can go ahead and lock that and that works perfect as well. Okay, then let's say we wanna add that to our desktop as well. So you can just go over here to video capture device. The neat thing is you can just select add existing and then select webcam. There you go. And if you want, you can put it in a different place. So let's say maybe this time you want it over there or if you want it in the same place, what you can do and probably what we should have done in this example is you can actually put it here and then just clone this scene. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just clone that scene to always make sure that those two appear in the same place. Uh, but just for fun, I'll just go ahead and stick this one on the other side. And you can make that uh, as, uh, as you would wish. And I'm not gonna get into this too much uh, in this video because there's just so much you can do with OBS. But if you wanna play around with it, there's a ton of filters that you can add to this. You can add um, you can do green screen, you can do, you can change the color, like chroma key would be green screen. You can add different colors to it. You can crop and pad uh, to the left and to the right. So if you want to make it, you know, a square, you get the idea. You can go through here and you can actually go and crop it and do everything else uh, to make this a particular uh, style. So let's go ahead and remove that. Filters, remove, perfect. So really powerful software, but that just gives you a quick idea. So let's go ahead and jump in here and let's create a really quick test uh, sample recording. So I know this is a little bit hard to follow because I'm doing a screen recording of a screen recording. So let's go ahead and try this. So if all you got to do to start this process is you just want to hit start recording. So what I typically do is I give it a second just to make sure that it's recording. Uh, we'll look down here just to make sure everything's running as it's supposed to. Uh, if you're using a second monitor, like I said, this is gonna be a lot easier. Otherwise, you're probably just gonna wanna minimize this and then go uh, through your process. Okay, so now I'm looking at my monitor, my second monitor, and as you can see, I'm just gonna scroll through this web page. Uh, seems to be working really well. There we go. I could be demoing it, you know, opening multiple tabs. Then let's say, oh, now I wanna take a look at my desktop. So now I can demo the desktop, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much the whole process. So let's go ahead and stop our recording. And we'll see here that it created that particular file for us. But one of the things I've noticed here, and that's going to be very important, and that's one of the challenges with doing something completely manually, is that we don't have the audio. So what we need to do is we need to go in here and we need to actually add in an audio input device. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and type the name of my microphone. If you've got just your built-in microphone, that works just fine. Click OK. And there you go. Another neat thing is that it's gonna show you all your levels here. So if you ever want to, you can just like mute your mic if you ever need to. That's gonna be more, that's gonna come in more handy if you're doing live broadcasting. Um, that, that makes it really easy to see your levels and how everything is gonna look as you're recording. Okay, then we need to pop that in here as well. There we go. Okay, so slightly important. Make sure that you have your audio in there. Uh, I'll go ahead and lock that as well. Uh, that way you make sure that it's uh, showing up as it's supposed to. But again, a really cool tool because you're able to see your audio levels and see you know, if you need to adjust them. Uh, either outside the software or inside the software to make sure that everything sounds as, as it is supposed to. All right, so let's jump back over. Let's do one more little quick test recording. Let's go ahead and scroll down the page. Go to another page, there we go. So now let's go over to just the entire desktop view that we created and there we go. So let's go ahead and hit stop recording. There we go. Let's take a look at the file we've created. And there you go. You can hear my voice kind of in the background there. And that's pretty much it. That's how you do a really basic screen recording. One of the things I want to show you though, before we finish up here, let's go ahead and uh, one of the things that you're able to do is create scene collections and you can't see the whole thing here. Um, but I've created a number of different scene collections. So this is just to give you a quick idea of what you can create within OBS. I've got multiple uh, audio versions here. I've got multiple screens. And this is something that I'm gonna be using as I am going live. So this is kind of a crazy, kind of more advanced look of what you can have uh, from within OBS. And I'll be showing you how to do webinars and live streams using OBS. But this is kind of a really nice uh, introduction to what you can do uh, with OBS and how you can do basic screen recording. And the real power in this also is that you're just gonna be able to set up these scenes uh, and all these different pieces in order to really be customizable, right? So that's what's really neat about this. If you're somebody who likes to be able to mess with the different style and the, and the layout, all the different pieces, then you're really gonna like what you can do with OBS. So that's just the basics. Uh, hopefully you find this useful. I think it's gonna be a really powerful tool for you moving forward as you are doing your screen recording videos. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. As always, if you did, hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already because uh, we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of new OBS specific videos in the future. So if you have, or you do webinars or you do Facebook Lives or any type of live broadcasting, I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks that you can do with OBS to create some pretty amazing webinars and live broadcasting experiences. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.